a leader on and off the field, the heart of the defense, a two-time NFL Defensive Player of the Year, along with winning the Walter Payton Man of the Year Award and a Super Bowl champion, a member of the College Football Hall of Fame and the Pro Football Hall of Fame, this is Mike Singletary. Mike Singletary was born October 9, 1958 in Houston, Texas. As the youngest of 10 children, he learned the importance of teamwork, perseverance, and faith from a young age. Mike played linebacker for his team at Worthing High School, and despite being told that he was too small for the game, he developed a reputation as a formidable player. He became an integral part of the team's defense with his aggressive playing style, earning him numerous accolades and a scholarship to Baylor University. At Baylor, Mike averaged 15 tackles a game, and in both 1979 and 1980, he was named All-American and Southwest Conference Player of the Year, as well as the Davy Bryan Award. In 1980, he helped the Baylor Bears to the Southwest Conference Championship. Singletary was drafted by the Chicago Bears in the second round of the 1981 NFL Draft. He earned NFL All-Rookie Team honors and became known as the heart of the defense for the Monsters of the Midway. Singletary secured his hold on the starting middle linebacker position from 1982 and was the Bears' first or second leading tackler in each of his next 10 seasons. He played in 10 consecutive Pro Bowls from 1983 through 1992 and was first team All-Pro in seven of those seasons. He was named the NFL's Defensive Player of the Year in 1985 and 1988. He started a defensive team record, 172 games for the Bears. Singletary anchor what is often considered the greatest defensive unit in professional football history as the 1985 Bears allowed just 12.4 points per game in the regular season and won their three playoff games by a combined score of 91 to 10 on the path to the Super Bowl 20 title. After retiring from football in 1993, Singletary spent a decade as a motivational speaker and corporate consultant. However, in 2003, after swearing off many previous requests to coach, Mike returned to the game, becoming the linebacker's coach of the Baltimore Ravens. He followed that up with a move to San Francisco in 2005 as linebacker's coach and was then named as the 49ers head coach in 2008. He then spent three years with the Minnesota Vikings organization. In 2016, he was back on the sidelines with the Los Angeles Rams. Mike Singletary's impact on the game of football extends far beyond his impressive statistics. He earned the nickname Samurai Mike during his professional career in recognition of the intimidating focus and intensity that he displayed on the field. In 1990, he was named as the NFL's Man of the Year, now known as the Walter Payton Man of the Year Award based on his reputation for integrity and leadership, both on and off the field. In 1998, he was awarded football's highest honor when he was voted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame in his first year of eligibility. Mike Singletary also left his mark on Baylor University. Upon his graduation, Baylor created the Mike Singletary Award, an award given annually to a senior football player recognized for their contribution to Baylor football while bringing honor to the school on and off the field. In 1995, he was both inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame and the Texas Sports Hall of Fame. Since retirement from coaching, Mike has been active on the speaker circuit and with his philanthropic interests. He has written four books, he has partnered with organizations such as National Child ID and the Leadership Zone, and currently is committed to working with underprivileged inner city communities through his nonprofit organization, Changing Our Perspectives. Mike and his wife Kim have seven children and 15 grandchildren. Mike and Kim live outside Dallas, Texas. The Gridiron Greats welcome Mike Singletary into their Hall of Fame. Thank you very much. been a lot said tonight, a um, lot of good words, and I, I think for 
for me, when it comes to gridiron great, it's just a matter of uh, being willing to make a difference, being willing to look around and help someone else. And I believe that the people that are going to do that are doing it. And for the time that I have, I just want to talk about a, a couple of things as it pertains to living our life, living our best life. The question was asked, um, Rabbi, Master, what is the greatest commandment in the Bible? What is the greatest law? It says, um, to love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. And the second is just like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. If we could get our arms around that, if we could wrap our arms around that truth and really understand love, and what it really is and what it really means to love. I think for me, love has really been finding out my why for life. What is it that I'm here to do? What can I give to make a difference? What what is it? What, what is it beyond money? What is it beyond material things? It is being able to look at someone and see a need and just fill it. It is being able to look at our own lives and have the courage to really search deep within ourselves and find what it is that God has placed within us that we can give. Playing the game of football for me was such a tremendous opportunity to give. To give of my heart, give of my mind, give of my soul. Not just every game, but every day, every practice to my teammates. Being able to find out who they were, what their needs were, trying to be there for them knowing that you have to count on them on Sundays. I tell my kids, from time to time, I'm tremendously lucky. I don't believe I've worked a day in my life. Everything I've done I was always searching for my why. What is it that I need to be doing right now? What is it that God has put in me right now? What is it that I should be doing right now that brings me joy, brings me happiness? Now, it takes work. It takes skill. It takes pain. It takes tears. It takes all of those things to reach deep within myself, and not just go through the motions of life. Find out what do I have to give to make a difference in somebody else's life. Find it. Next, it is when. When will I begin to do those things that takes me towards what I love to do? When will I begin to stop making excuses and really understand that this is 
If it is what I love to do, if it is what I really want to do, if it is the thing that brings me deep desire, it's going to take everything I've got. It's going to take blood and it's going to take sweat. It's going to take tears. It's going to take all of those things, every bit of whatever I've got. Because if I'm not doing that, I'm wasting time. When will you make the commitment to decide to give whatever it takes? If I'm asking how much it costs, how much is it going to take, I'm asking the wrong question. Do it. Give it. Whatever you have. And when it gets really hard, when it gets really tough, give more. Give more. The last one is who? Who do I look around to say, hey, man, thank you for what you did. Hey, thank you for this. Well, you know, they don't say thank me enough. They, they, they don't say I appreciate it. They don't do it. I don't need that because I'm not doing it for you. I'm doing it for me because it's an assignment for each and every one of us because every one of us has something great to give and when we give it, It is our joy, it is our pleasure, it is our opportunity to give because the word says give and it will be given to you. Pressed down, shaken together, running over. Whatever I give, man, I'm going to give everything I've got because every time I do, I get so much more back. I am thankful because I've had so many people in my life make a difference in me. I'm thankful for my wife, Kim. What a hard job she had dealing with me. I I, I was tough to deal with. You know, when you're the last of 10 kids, dad leaves mom when you're 12 years old, brothers in and out of jail, sisters having babies out of wedlock, it's tough. Mom working two or three jobs, I may see her later on that night. There's a lot of stuff that you come out of that with, but Kim, my wife, was able to be there. And I'm just fighting. <laughs> I'm just fighting. She's trying to help. Mike, Mike, Mike. Oh, 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 it's okay. No, no, no. I got to fight. I got to fight. You know what I'm talking about. And it takes your best friend to stand with you and love you through it and help you understand that maybe there's another way. I'm thankful for good iron grates because it comes from the heart of a man that that is really misunderstood, and that's Coach Ditka. I used to walk in his office, and he was in the office reading books, trying to figure out how do I communicate so they listen. And I'd walk in on him. I wouldn't knock on the door. I'd just walk in, and he'd knock all the stuff off the desk so I didn't see him reading. So what are you reading? Don't worry about it. You don't need to know that. You need to knock when you're at the door. Coach, I just come to talk to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what, what do you need? But I saw he was trying. He was working at it. And Emory Moorhead is right. Coach Ditka had a huge heart. Always giving. Always trying to make a difference. Always trying to help somebody else. Always trying to help those uh, less fortunate. 
That's who he was. And because of that, the gridiron greats continued to live and thrive. Now that I have a better understanding of what, it, what they're really doing here, just like so many other things that my wife and I are part of, We'll make sure we add it to the list. There are a lot of needs out there. I just thank God for the opportunity to be here tonight. I'm thankful to receive this, this honor. When it's all said and done, everything I've ever done always started with the heart of giving. Give, and it will be given to you. Pressed down, shaken together, running over. Thank you. God bless you.